Hey everyone, welcome to Trucking Sustainably. We are in California at Ag Expo and there's no better place to talk about the new Volvo announcement of the CARB 24 Omnibus Compliant Engine. We're gonna to talk to Dwayne Teagles and Johan Agerbrown about the new engine, what the certification means and what it means for fleets here in California. Let's get to it. Okay, Johan, Dwayne, great to see you guys. Always, always appreciate you taking the time. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's great. So you've announced here the Volvo CARB 24 Omnibus Compliant Engine. That's a lot of words and there's a lot of regulation happening right now. Right. Walk me through these different certifications you have to go through. I know we talk a lot about EPA GHG 27, there's CARB, now there's CARB 24 Omnibus. What are all these certifications you have to meet? Yeah, so this is a what we call low NOx 0.05 engine and it's really the step towards CARB 27. So CARB 27 will be 0.035 uh, and will cater or, or build on this technology, but this is really 0.05, which is a fully carb compliant engine, uh, as it says, from an omnibus perspective. Okay, right, Let's, let me dive into that a little bit because we're here at Act Expo, we are in California. Yes. We have heard uh, some rumblings here in the past year of just some, uh, some difficulties getting trucks in the California fleet hands, being able to sell those engines. What does a CARB 24 Omnibus compliant engine mean for getting fleets those trucks here in California? It means a lot more availability for them. So uh, when it comes to OEMs and how we need to deal with all the regulations, there's been restrictions in the marketplace and this one really, it, it becomes what it's called credit neutral. So this one is available in a much more volume uh, if needed for those customers. Right, and just to, just to be clear, those credits, that's happening on the OEM side, that's not the fleet side, that's something that you, that you all have to work through Correct. in the fleet. But the regulations is only applying to OEMs. Gotcha. Dwayne, so the CARB 24 Omnibus Compliant, what, walk us through what we got going on on the design and engineering side, what makes this engine work? Okay, so what you're seeing here is just a chassis layout, so the th there's a few new things here on the chassis, you'll see them highlighted here in a pink color here, you'll notice that uh, we've got an alternator, we've got some updates to our after treatment system and there's a battery box in the back of the chassis. Now as we look at the engine you'll see we have a 48 volt alternator right here. That 48 volt alternator um, is then going to feed electricity to our 48 volt lithium ion battery and then that lithium ion battery then is going to supply power inside of our after treatment system. This after treatment system you see here the exterior part of it is the same that's in the VNL behind us. Now, when we open it up, you'll see one new component here, and that is a grid heater. It's a 10 kilowatt grid heater here. So when the truck is running under low load um, startup conditions, this will pull power from the battery, heat up, uh, kind of like a hair dryer to extend. Right. Heat, heat up that exhaust and then allow the um, def fluid to evaporate and then convert the NOx. I see, so you're just keeping the exhaust hotter when you need to to burn off more of that particular matter and keep it. Keep Not necessarily particulate matter, but NOx at that point in time, that's where we're converting it. Got yeah. it, okay. This is also the VGT engine. It is the VGT engine, What yes. is it about the VGT that was suited for this application? So as you, we just mentioned, we've got heat in the exhaust and we wanna keep that exhaust heat up. So the turbo compounding engine grabs heat from the exhaust and turns that back into energy. So we need that heat back here in the after treatment system to convert that NOx. So the VGT engine coupled with the heater in it is ideal for that cold startup and low load situations. Right, got it. Okay, anytime we're talking about after treatment or engine, we gotta talk about maintenance. Any maintenance concerns, anything different, anything new, anything fleets need to know about it with the, the new engine? Uh, actually, with the extra heat there, you'll see a bigger conversion of the NOx, so you'll see less crystallization of the DEF fluid in the after treatment okay. system, so it's a kind of a bonus. Uh, no additional maintenance in the system. The engine's the same, same platform as the D13 turbo compounding unit and also all of our other D13 uh, systems. Okay, very good. The same maintenance comes in in the system uh, as we've had before and same warranties, etc. So we don't expect any changes. Okay, good. Maintenance the same, warranties the same, performance, I mean, is, is this available for the VNL and the VNR and those applications those trucks uh, are going absolutely. into? Absolutely, so it's installed in both uh, our new platforms or it's installed with our new platforms because it's a basically a 24 volt based engine. So it goes into the new VNR and the new VNL. Very cool, availability. 
Availability, we can't talk about fully yet. We expect it at the end of the year. Uh, so we are in the process of applying for certifications and then, have, of course, have to wait our due diligence to make sure that the certifications and everything goes through. When we receive the certification, the, we, we can uh, push on the availability. But, but our planning is end of this year. Perfect. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you Jason.